Okay, so today will be the last uh, last way that we can prove triangles congruent. Um, this is going to be one that only works with right triangles, um, and so the abbreviation for it is going to be hypotenuse leg. Um, so again, this only works with right triangles, um, and so in a right triangle, when I have the hypotenuse and one of the legs equal to each other, um, I can prove that my triangles are congruent to each other. So just remember that the right angle is always the one, or sorry, the hypotenuse is always the side that is across from the right angle. Um, a lot of times people think about it as the, uh, the side that is diagonal. Um, that doesn't always work um, if the triangle's rotated in a certain direction or whatever. So just make sure we always think about it as the side across from the right angle. And so the one thing that's a little bit different about this is when I'm using hypotenuse leg, um, really there's only two things I need to prove congruent. The hypotenuse is congruent, the leg is congruent, and then whenever we're proving using hypotenuse leg, we have to say that our triangles are right triangles. Um, the other thing that makes hypotenuse leg a little bit tricky is you won't know you're using hypotenuse leg until like the very end of the proof um, when you will get an angle in two sides and the angle's not between, and so it would be like an angle side side, but we know we can't do that. So then that has to be our uh, hint that we have to use hypotenuse leg. So with this first one right here, um, I've got that uh, PR is perpendicular to SQ, and PQ and PS are uh, equal to each other, and I want to prove that my triangles are congruent. So again, my first is going to be my uh, given statement. So PR is perpendicular to SQ. And then also PQ is equal to PS. And so again, if PR is perpendicular to SQ, again, I'm going through this thinking I'm solving this like a regular proof. So that would mean that uh, these two angles are both right angles, which means that they're equal to each other. So I'm going to say that uh, angle uh, PRS is equal to angle PRQ. And again, I would, on the right-hand side, I would say definition of perpendicular. Um, so I've got those angles. I've got angles on a side. I need one more thing. So I've got PR is equal to PR by looking at my picture. There's my reflexive property. So again, on my picture, I've got... Uh, so when I'm here, I've got my three things. And so I look at it, and here's my angle and then here are my two sides. And so as I can see, uh, my angle's not in between my sides, so I know it's not SAS, so this one would actually be an angle side side. Um, we know that we can't do that, so what I have to recognize is that it's a right triangle, and so PS is my hypotenuse, and then this PR is gonna end up being my leg. And so what I need to say is with my fourth step, I need to be able to say that uh, triangle PRS and triangle uh, PRQ are right triangles. Whenever I'm proving using hypotenuse leg, I need to, instead of saying that my right angles are equal to each other, I need to say that my uh, triangles are both right triangles. Uh, and again, the way that I would say this is still definition of perpendicular. Um, I know PR is perpendicular to SQ, and so that means that uh, those triangles are both going to be right triangles. And then with my last step, I've got my triangles are both right triangles. I have the hypotenuse and the leg equal to each other. And so I can say triangle PRQ is equal, or, yeah, is equal to triangle PRS. And I would, oops. And this is because of hypotenuse leg. Again, just another way of saying, like, just like SSS, SAS, or uh, ASA, AAS, hypotenuse leg is another way of saying my triangles are equal. With uh, proof on the bottom, again, uh, I'm going to go through. So uh, let's skip our given statements because let's just do that. So with my second step, Again, I've got BD and FD are equal to each other. It says D is the midpoint of CE, so I know that CD is going to be equal to DE.
Again, I want to use the same word, so I'm going to go definition of midpoint. Um, and then it says angle BCD and angle FED are right angles. So I can say angle BCE, oops, BCD, is equal to angle FED. BCD and FED are equal to each other by definition of right angle. And when I get to this point, again, I've got to see that I've got... Um, here's my angle, and here are my two sides. And so I can see that the angle's not between the sides. It's a right angle, and so I can see that this is my hypotenuse. CD is my leg, and so, again, whenever I'm using hypotenuse leg, I need to say that triangle BCD and triangle FED are both right triangles by definition of a right angle. So then I can say that triangle BCD is equal to triangle FED by hypotenuse leg. Flip over to the back, two more. Again, with this one. So I've got my given statement. With the second step, uh, PRS and RPQ are both right angles. I know that angle PRS is going to be equal to angle RPQ by definition of a right angle. Um, I've got my sides are equal to each other. So I've got my angles and I've got my sides. And so then I can look at my picture and see that PR is going to be equal to PR. By reflexive property. So again, I'm going to look at my angle and then my two sides. The angle isn't between the sides, so I know that this can't be SAS. It would be angle side side. And so I know I can't do that, so I know I, I have a right angle, so I'm going to make these uh, congruent by hypotenuse leg. Go triangle uh, PRS is equal to triangle RPQ. Or oopsie. PRS and PRQ, RPQ. All right, triangles. By definition of a right angle, and then I can say triangle PRS is equal to triangle RPQ by hypotenuse leg. Again, if I look at my picture, this is going to be my hypotenuse, uh, PR is going to be my leg, and so they are both right triangles because they said that uh, those two angles are right, uh, right angles. And the last one that I have here uh, says CD is equal to AE. So I've got those marked on my picture. And then AD is the perpendicular bisector of CE. AD is the perpendicular bisector. So again, first step is my given. Second step, uh, if AD is perpendicular to CE, I know that these two angles are going to be right angles. So I can say that angle ABE is equal to angle C, oops, CBD, ABE and CBD, by definition of perpendicular, They're both right angles. It says that AD is the perpendicular bisector of CE, so again, CE is being cut in half, so I know that CB is equal to BE by definition of a segment bisector. Perpendicular bisector gives me two things. It gives me perpendicular and it gives me a segment bisector. Remember that the second thing is always the thing that is being bisected. 
AD is perpendicular bisector of CE. And so once I'm here, again, I have the right angles. I have two sides, but if I look at it, it is angle, and then the sides are not or the angles not between the two sides. And so I can say that triangle uh, CBD and triangle uh, EBA are both right triangles by definition of perpendicular. Again, the reason why I knew the right triangles is because I have those two uh, sides, A, D, and C, E. Those segments are, are perpendicular to each other. So once I do that, then I can say triangle CBD is equal, equal to triangle EBA. And I know this by hypotenuse leg. AE is the hypotenuse. Um, BE is the leg. They're both right triangles. And so I know that they have to be equal to each other by hypotenuse leg.